Now, last little uh, adjustment here. Uh, typically, the last few times we've done these PowerPoint notes, I've grabbed your screens, have I not? Yeah. Um, the reason why I grabbed your screens is because I didn't trust most of you to actually listen and pay attention and not be doing other homework while I was going through notes. So, we're going to try it again. With you having your computers, your netbooks, so you can take notes, do whatever you want to do. But I do not want to see you working on your Quizlet right now, answering questions from the concept check right now. You need to engage your active listening skills. If you have your, your laptop or your netbook open, it should be open to something like a PowerPoint with the slide that I'm on, or just close it up. Okay? So, let's get to it. Um, today's little lesson. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Now, if you're taking notes on a Word document, it's fine. Yeah. I just don't want you not paying attention, believe it or not. Okay. Um, and remember, you can turn your notes into Moodle. So. All right. Um, Gregor Mendel is known as the father of genetics. He was a monk that lived in the 1800s. I uh, lived in the country of Austria, which is right around there somewhere, by Germany, up in the Alps. Um, he's known as the father of genetics. Right? Um, first learning objective is, is tied directly to the probability quest. So if you do all the probability quests, you should be able to understand how probability and randomness, what they are and how they're connected. We'll go through that tomorrow, obviously. Um, big thing for today, blending hypothesis versus the particulate hypothesis. We are moving through ideas about heredity. Hopefully in the back of your mind you remember this idea that people had in the 1600s about a little man inside a sperm cell fertilizing an egg, and that's how people came to be, right, the pre-formationism idea. We're moving on. The next great idea was called the blending hypothesis. And then we moved on from that to the particulate hypothesis. And when we're, when we're done with this unit, we'll come to the current hypothesis known as the chromosome theory. So, a little history today, all right? A um, little bit of uh, some examples. And then... A little bit about Mendel, but mostly Mendel will say for uh, next week what he actually did. All right. Again, for the longest time, people really didn't understand how traits were passed on. How did Rebone become Rebone? The traits that he has, whether or not his ears were attached, the color of his eyes, all these different traits that he has. How did they, how did they, how did you get them? If you were a farmer, why was it that a cow gives good milk, but then not all the calves from that cow give good milk? Why is it that this apple tree was great, but then some of the seeds from that apple tree were planted and grew up in the sickly tree? What, how did these things happen? Okay? Weren't understood. Across the white flower plant with a purple flower plant, what color flowers are they going to be? Don't know. Okay? For the longest time. Then, in the 1800s, Gregor Mendel came around. And by doing some very simple experiments with pea plants, he laid the foundation for what we now call genetics. Because of Mendel, we understand now how Rebone is going to pass his traits on to his offspring. Okay? So this guy right here was the guy that started it on. So we give him credit. Right? Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk, <coughs> father of genetics. 1800s. Wait, wait, wait. Hold yeah. on a minute. You go back. 
to go back to this. Leave some space, Noah. Space, space, and then keep up with it. Um, you should know your parts of the flower. Stamen's the male part. Pistil or carpal, right? Pistil or carpal is the <coughs> female part. <coughs> Ovules turn into seeds. Most of the time, it's the ovary that turns into the fruit, either fleshy or dry. Right? Any questions on flower parts? We've got about 20 questions tomorrow on the quiz over flower parts. Yes? Okay, um, so you don't know, like you said, like everything else in the door is going to be on the top. Yes. Yes, it's all fair game. What phase of mitosis are the tetrads split? Fair game. Yeah. <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to know what phase of meiosis is the tetrads split. And phase one. Yes, yeah. and phase one. All right. Now, here is, well, first of all, just make sure you understand what a trait is, okay? The trait is a particular variation of whatever characteristic we're talking about. What color hair do I have? What color eyes? Do my ear earlobes attach, or do they swing to and fro? Uh, time to knock, and time to blow, all that kind of stuff, right? Traits, traits, traits. Now, the first, well, not the first, but one of the first hypotheses to explain how traits are passed on was called the blending hypothesis. And pictorially, this is what the blending hypothesis stated. If my parent was red and my other parent was yellow, if we crossed these parents, planted their seeds, all the offspring would be orange because red blended with yellow gives you orange. Tall mom, short dad, medium kid. Plenty. Okay? That's the blending hypothesis. That the traits of parents blend together to form the traits of the offspring. Alright? Now that's a better idea than this homoculus idea that there's a little man inside a sperm cell. But, as we'll see, and as you probably are thinking through your head right now, if you're thinking, that really doesn't explain everything. Wendy? Example, I mean, all right, let's say I cross two red flowered plants and I plant their seeds and some of the offspring are yellow. Does the blending <laughs> hypothesis support that? No. Or is that supported? No, it's not. So, like Rebone and Haynes and a lot of your, the blending hypothesis doesn't explain things very well. And there's more often there's, there's evidence like this that actually flies right in the face of the blending hypothesis. I was, at, I, was in our, I was in Ann Arbor last weekend, and I hung out with Ryan Van Bergen after the game for a while. You know who Ryan Van Bergen is? Yeah. Who is it? Who knows Ryan Van Bergen? Okay, could you describe him to me, please? Yeah. He's what? Yeah, he's flying like 6'5", 300 some pounds. Nice guy, shake your shake your hand, you break your arm type of guy, right? Um, well, if you ever met his, well, you know his uncle. His uncle is the former principal here. How would you describe Mr. Van Berg? Well, guess what? So does his brother, who happens to be Ryan's dad. And so does so does his mom. His mom's about this big. His dad's about this big. And then there's Ryan. Does that does the blending hypothesis support it there? No. Okay. That's like an Who knows? Yeah. 